Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation with 10th powers. So it's going to be a very powerful problem. We have cosine x to the 10th power minus sine x to the 10th power equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, this equation looks pretty complicated, don't you think? We have the 10th power. Can we factor this? Absolutely. This is like a difference of two squares. At the same time, it's also a difference of fifth powers and so on and so forth, also 10th powers. So there are a lot of ways you can factor this, but is that gonna help? I doubt it. So that's why we're not gonna go that route, but I'm just letting you know, in some cases, for example, if you had the difference of two cubes, you could try factoring it. Would that be helpful? Probably, let's consider the case of three, for example, right? So suppose you had the following equation, you would probably want to factor this because factoring it is going to give you something simple like this. And then the second factor is going to be actually even nicer, which uh, let me show you real quick why. When you factor this by difference of two cubes, a cubed minus b cubed, you're going to get something like this, cosine squared plus sine squared x, right? You didn't see that. So their sum is one. So we get something like cosine x minus sine x. By the way, this is not the problem. I'm just showing you an alternative problem. And then you're going to get something like this. And there is a way to associate these two things. You know, if you call this A, you can square it and get something like this. So, yeah, it's not the best way probably to do it. But there is a way to do it with the lower powers. With the 10th power, I don't think you want to go that route. Factoring would be uh, probably catastrophic. So... Instead, we're going to be using a different approach. That's what makes this problem so non-standard because we're going to be using something super important. Now, sine and cosine, if x is real, then they are bounded from above and below. In other words, cosine x must be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive, and the same thing goes for sine x. But again, I repeat, this is for real values of x. And this channel is focuses basically on real numbers mainly, but I have another channel called A plus BI that focuses on non-real numbers, complex numbers, imaginary numbers, so on and so forth. So go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. Now, once we establish this, how is this gonna help us, right? I mean, you can go ahead and try to raise both sides to the 10th power, but I mean, you don't really need to do that because think about it. If cosine is going to change between negative 1 and 1, obviously there's a symmetry, right? If you kind of split it into two halves at 0, then they're going to be symmetrical. When you raise them to the 10th power, what is the cool thing about 10th power? First of all, 10 is even. The same thing will happen with 2nd power or 4th power or 6th power, so on and so forth. You're going to get the following. 10th power cannot be negative, obviously, but it could be 0. So now cosine x to the 10th power needs to be between 0 and 1. It can be 0 because obviously cosine goes through 0 and same thing goes for sine. So we can say the same thing for sine x to the 10th power. It has to be between 1 and 0. Great, but wait a minute. We're looking at their differences. So if you just take these two things and add them, obviously, you're going to get a different inequality, but we need their difference. So how do you pull that off, right? So maybe I can try something like this. I can multiply, oops, didn't mean to do that. I can maybe multiply by negative 1, and I can get something like this, which should be helpful, right? Let's try that. Of course, it's going to switch the inequality. That's why I switched those numbers around. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. And now we can go ahead and add these two things to get what we want, right? And when we do, we're going to get something interesting. Cosine x minus that is going to be between negative 1 and 1, just like sine and cosine originally, right? But is that going to help at all? I mean, I do need this to be 1. By the way, these kinds of things don't always work well. you got to be very careful because sine and cosine are related. Why? Because sine squared x, again, we talked about this, remember? Plus cosine squared x equals 1. So when cosine is on a certain interval, or the 10th power of cosine, sine cannot be on another interval without 
you know, disregard for cosine. I don't know if that makes sense. I probably made it too complicated. But here's what I'm trying to say. Let's go ahead and consider this. And we know that this is equal to 1, right? But instead of writing this as 1, I'm going to write it as 1 minus 0. Why is this helpful? Take a look. If this is 1 and this is 0, it works. And that can happen. You know why? Because if when sine is 0, and when sine is 0, cosine has to be 1 or negative 1. And if you think about the positive uh, values, which is the even powers, that can work. But the million dollar question is, is this the only way to do it? That's a good question. So that's what we're going to try to answer it. But at least we know that if cosine x to the 10th power is 1, and, and is important here, sine x to the 10th power is 0, then Houston, we have a solution. Great. Let's go and explore a little bit more what this means. Now, if cosine of x is equal to that the 10th power is equal to 1, then we can kind of split it into two solutions because this means cosine x can be 1 or negative 1. Great. But this one has only one consequence, sine x is equal to 0. And we know that this guy implies these. So, if we just focus on solving this, we should be in good shape, don't you think? Exactly. So what does sine x equals 0 mean? If you think about the unit circle, which is super important, if you're doing trigonometry or precalculus or whatever that involves trigonometry, then you probably know that sine x is going to be on the y-axis. So this is the y-axis. So when sine is 0, we're basically here or here. In other words, either 0 or pi or negative pi or 2 pi. In other words, multiples of pi. Even? Odd? No. All multiples of pi are going to give you sine x equals 0. In other words, x equals k pi, where k is an integer. Z for Zalen, right? Okay, because it comes from German. I didn't know that. But anyways, this seems to be a solution. But again, can there be another way to pull this off, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at it from a reductio ad absurdum. Is that, is that how it's called? pronounced? I don't know. Uh, proof by contradiction. Okay, so suppose... Suppose cosine to the 10th power of x is less than 1. And sine x to the 10th power of x is greater than 0, which means they're not going to take the value of 1 and 0. Instead, uh, obviously, you want cosine, cosine x to the 10th power cannot be greater than 1, obviously, right? The highest value you can get is 1. That's why if you suppose this, on the contrary then you're going to get something like this. If sine x to the 10th power is greater than 0, then negative of that is going to be less than 0. Now add these two inequalities. And you might be saying, like, are they going to work together nicely? Yep, they are. And now you're going to get something like this. Uh-oh, that's not good because this is a contradiction. So you got to be very careful, which means this is... This assumption is not correct. In other words, these are the only solutions, or this is the only case for which this works. If we had odd powers, what would happen? That's for you to explore. But the only solutions are these. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus PI. And bye-bye.